Good morning. I'm uh, Professor Didier Pitet. I'm Professor of Medicine and uh, Clinical uh, Epidemiology at the University of Geneva Hospitals and Faculty of Medicine in Geneva, Switzerland. I'm also the director of the WHO Collaborating Center for Patient Safety. Today, I have the pleasure to present to you a study that we are publishing in the March issue of uh, the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In the study, we assessed the contamination of stethoscopes and physician hands in a very simple, single examination, clinical examination of patients. We actually assess the density of bacterial contamination of different parts of the stethoscopes and of the hands, the dominant hands of physicians while they were actually performing a single clinical examination. The sampling was very simple. We actually sampled four parts of the hands of physicians. The two eminences, tenar and hypotenar, the dorsum of the hands, the fingertips, together with actually two parts of the stethoscopes. The tube that you are using when you are handling the stethoscope and the membrane of the stethoscope that you are applying on the patient chest, as you all know. Well, speaking of specimen collections, we use culture medium by Rodak Plate Culture. We use, we use both non-selective and selective culture media, as you may understand. Selective culture media were agar, chromogenic agar, used for MRSA uh, detection. Speaking of the results, we actually examined 83 patients. They were recruited in internal medicine wards as well as in orthopedic wards. We performed a total of almost 500 quantitative culture techniques on hands or on stethoscopes. Well, because an image is worth a thousand words, let me now show you three actual cases in pictures. On the first row, you see actually case number one, fingertips colonization, tenar and hypotenar colonization, as well as stethoscope diaphragm and tube colonization, there was almost no contamination except fingertips. Case number two, you see here a density of colonization on fingertips that is much higher, that is actually higher than the colonization of the tenar and hypotenar uh, eminences, and that are correlated with a modest but still very significant colonization of the diaphragm of the stethoscope as well as the tube of the stethoscope. Here then, see case number three. On case number three, it's very remarkable. You see a very high density of fingertips colonization together with a high density of tenar and hypotenar colonization and, of course, a very high density of membrane or diaphragm stethoscope colonization together with a high density of tube colonization. Let me show you now the key results of the study. On this slide, you see colonization of the hands in orange and colonization of the stethoscope in blue. As you can see, the density of colonization on the fingertips is very, very high, much higher than the colonization of the tenor and hypotenor eminence and of the dorsum of the hands. In blue, you can see that the colonization of the stethoscope membrane is much higher than the colonization of all parts of the hands in orange except the colonization of the fingertips. And as you can see also, the colonization of the stethoscope tube is quite important, quite similar to the colonization of the eminence of the hands, whether tenor or apotenor. Very important results, as you may understand. On the next slides, I am showing you the association between diaphragm colonization and fingertip colonization. As you can very well see on this slide, the more the colonization of the hands, and in particular of the fingertips of the hands, the more the colonization of the diaphragm of the stethoscope. A close correlation between the two. The same way we demonstrated colonization of global counts, 
we actually could demonstrate colonization with MRSA. The more the fingertips colonize with MRSA, the more the membrane of the stethoscope and the tube of the stethoscope colonized with MRSA. And again, the level and the degree of contamination with MRSA was much higher in the fingertips than on the rest of the hands, similar to the colonization of the stethoscopes. In conclusion, stethoscope contamination is A, not negligible, and B, closely related to levels of contamination of the physician's dominant hand, and this is true both for MRSA and for global counts. It is not negligible because the stethoscope diaphragm is more contaminated than any parts of the physician's hands, with the exception of the physician's fingertips. Findings in these studies are clinically relevant, and I would say very clinically relevant. Those results suggest the need for the routine cleansing of the stethoscope after each clinical use. I repeat, the need for the routine cleansing of the stethoscope after each clinical use. And this is uh, of concern, of course, for every staff, for physicians, and for patients. Now, what are the next steps for research? Well, actually, there are two very key questions that we should ask. The first is how to assess the real risk for cross-transmission, knowing that the fingertips are the main part of the hands that are responsible for cross-transmission of bacteria in hospitals, and what are the risks for infections, and nosocomial infections in particular? That would be the first study question. The second study question would be, what are the best ways to clean those stethoscopes? And a way and ways that will not damage the stethoscope. And that's important, as you may understand. If I showed you, actually, my old stethoscope, a stethoscope that I used for more than 30 years, and that I used to actually cleanse, you can see that the stethoscope has been highly damaged. So we need to find a way to clean those stethoscopes without damaging them. Well, as a final conclusion, I would like to thank you for your attention and would really recommend all of you to read our paper. Thank you very much.